girls, I am Nitrogen and I'm Kinetic Kirsty and today we're here to do an amazing air science show. So we are going to explore all kinds of science all about air. Air's pretty amazing but it's something we forget about all the time because it's just kind of there. It's there but it's invisible, we can't see it. It's feelable or on a windy day, or if there was warm air moving, maybe if a fan was moving air, but we can't see it. No, but we know it's there because we breathe it all the time. So you can take a really deep breath and breathe back out. And believe it or not, you will have changed the air. So our body uses some of the air and in fact air is a mixture of gases and none of these gases that we can see. So whilst it's invisible our body is actually bringing the air and the mixture of gases into our lungs and it uses up one of the gases, the most important one to our survival, oxygen. oxygen. Now I've called myself nitrogen and that's the name of another gas. The most abundant gas the in most our planet. The most abundant gas means that there's the most amount of this type of gas in our atmosphere. In fact, 78% of what we breathe is nitrogen. And 20, 20 point 20.8, so just under 21%, is what oxygen is made of. And that's what our body uses. So we breathe in air, our body uses up oxygen, and we breathe back out carbon, carbon dioxide. dioxide, another type of gas. So whilst air is everywhere and we can't see it, we use it all the time. Now speaking of breathing out, we can use air as a force and we can fill a balloon, like the balloons around us. So this is going to be our first experiment and it's going to demonstrate another piece of science which is really interesting. Over to you, Kinetic Kirsty. Right guys, I've got my rocket balloon. Now a rocket balloon is cool so because it's going to do some moving, okay? We're going to force air in one direction, we're going to stretch our balloon a little bit, and see what happens. Oh, so as we're blowing air inside, the rubber of the balloon is stretching Ooh, and making a noise. The air being forced in is now a different air pressure to the air that's inside the room around us. So all this air that's moving around us is free to move, but the air in there is trapped and it's taking up the least amount of space it possibly can. It's all being tightly squished in together. I don't think it likes it though, it, it feels like it wants to pop. Exactly, so air doesn't like to be different, in fact it likes to be the, the same. same. And this air in here is now a high air pressure as all the molecules are squished together. But it doesn't want to be different, it doesn't want to be high air pressure, it wants to be free to move around. So even if we tied knots in it like these balloons up here and we kept the air inside of the balloon, the air's not going to stay in there. Forever. I mean, everyone has one of those wrinkly old birthday balloons that's been sat maybe for six months, eight months, even a year. Yeah, and slowly they deflate as the air starts to escape. And sometimes they might even go pop, pop. But we're not going to pop our balloon today. We're not going to put any more air in and we're not going to tie a knot. We're going to let, let it go. go. <gasps> there goes the balloon. And along the way, we saw it travelling over in this direction. This was happening because of force of air. And this is the amazing piece of science that was discovered by Isaac Newton. And it involves the third law of motion. And what did Newton, Isaac Newton say? Well, every action that happens in one direction is going to have an equal and opposite reaction in the opposite direction. Exactly. So. With our balloon, when we had air inside, this open end of our balloon was going to let all the air out. And if we hold our balloon that way, all the air is going to rush out in this direction and the balloon will travel the opposite way. The opposite way. Over that way. And that's what made it fly. But we also heard something, didn't we? Oh, definitely. It made up a quite a squealy, unhappy sound. Oh, yes. So that squealy sound's happening as the air is rippling out through the entrance of the balloon, the opening of the balloon, and it's creating vibrations, and vibrations are what make sound. So we found out some more science there too. Right. Pretty cool. 
So this air has now become the same pressure as the air in the room is free to move around. And whilst we were blowing the air into our balloon, we were inflating it and it was stretching. But not everything has that effect. Not everything will stretch and inflate like a balloon will. And some things need more air in order for them to blow up. So we're going to have a look at our wind tube. So we've got some that we've prepared. And if you've got our little bags, that's what you can use. If you haven't, then we can make one from a plastic bag, which we'll show you in a moment. So this is our wind tube. At one end, we've got an opening and the other end is sealed shut. And these are two meters long, so we can socially, socially distance. <laughs> now, these wind tubes can be filled with air, but they're going to need more air because they're bigger than our rocket balloon will do. Even, it took me two breaths, two big breaths, to fill up even just that rocket balloon. So this is going to take a lot more. Mm, definitely more than two breaths. So shall we try three and see how far you get? Because I don't want you breathing too hard or as you might think. <gasps> Let's see, how many or how much air can we get inside with just three breaths of air? One, two, three. And Kinetic Kirsty's trapped the air at that end and she's going to push it down so that we can see how full that is. So she's done about half of the wind tube, just over half, with just three breaths of air. Now that's pretty cool, that's pretty good. I thought it was actually going to take a lot more to get this amount of air inside, so that's pretty good. So we're going to let that air escape, so we're just going to push it out. But do you know what, Kinetic Kirsty, I can show you another way, a different way, that we can use the air around us to help us inflate this tube. And in fact, we're not going to need three breaths of air. Five. No, not more. Seven. Less. Less? Less. Less than three. In fact, we don't even need two. In fact, we could probably fill this in just one breath of air. I don't think I don't think I can do that. Well, we can use a bit of science to help us. Now, there was a mathematician, and he liked doing some science. It was a kind of a science and mathematician, and his name was Mr. Bernoulli. And Mr. Bernoulli made this amazing discovery. He discovered that fast moving air is different from the air around it and it makes low air pressure so we can use this science in fact you can feel the science if you blow on your own hands so we can create fast moving air by blowing and we can feel it on our hands so that breath blowing fast is different from the air around us and it hits our hand but what we're noticing is it feels quite strong there's lots of air moving against our hands and that's because the air in the room is joining in too and we can use that principle to inflate our wind tube in just one breath. So if you hold it to your face, only the air inside from your lungs can get inside of the wind tube. And we want the rest of the air in the room to be able to join in. So you're going to need to hold it further away from your body. So arms distance away. I'm going to hold the other end of the tube. And Kinesic Kirstie's just going to have one breath. Just one. So blowing from a distance, she's going to need to aim her breath into the tube almost as though she's aiming to blow candles out on a cake a little bit further away and as she blows in we're going to try and trap the air and we're going to see if she can get it to fill in just one breath are you ready i'm ready three two one whoa she did it that's oh, amazing wow no no it's amazing <laughs> so our wind tube is filled with air and one breath was all we needed to do it and this was all because of what Bernoulli discovered the fast moving air traveling from our lungs brings in the air in the room to join it so this is now filled not just with breath from Kirsty's lungs but air from the room too pretty cool. pretty cool now if you didn't have one of these you can make your own one and here's one that we made earlier out of plastic bags so you could use a refuse sack or a rubbish bag, a bin bag, one that's not dirty ideally, but you can use um, carrier bags as well. So this is just one carrier bag that we've cut into strips and then we've stuck the strips together with a fair bit of tape. So first of all, we made one long piece and then we folded it over to make a tube shape and we've connected it all together with some set of tape. And then at this end, we've tied it into a knot so that we can trap the air and this ends the open end that we can fill. Oh, have a go. <gasps> Whoa, not bad. I don't think I did quite as good as you did, Kirsty, but we have got air inside there. So if you haven't got one of these wind tubes, you can have a go at making your own. Now, the wind tubes are great, but what happens if 
I mean, you've got an open space, you're blowing air in. Where does that air get then go? Because it, it can't, we can't always trap it. Mm, absolutely. So if we just blow, it kind of escapes everywhere. It goes in all directions, doesn't it? And the slower air starts to slow down the fast moving air until they all become the same speed because air doesn't, doesn't like, like to be different. different. It, it likes, likes to be the same. same. So if we wanted to channel the fast moving air to create a bigger force, we could maybe use something like a straw. Ah, more directed. Brilliant, yeah, exactly. So we've got like a column and we can create a column of air. So we're gonna use a straw. So if you can take a straw from your little bag or if you find a straw in your own home, it needs to be a straw that has a bend in it because we're going to need to angle it to control where the air goes. Now normally if you take a straw, you would slip up your drink this way. <laughs> But we're not going to do that. Oh. We're going to do the opposite. Always. Always. <laughs> so boys and girls, we're going to take our straw, we're going to bend it so that the short part is pointing upwards and it's actually the long part of the straw that we're going to be putting in our mouths. And we're going to blow through instead of sucking, so pushing the air through and we can see if we can feel the air coming out the top here. Oh yeah, I can feel it on my hand. Oh yes, and you can literally pinpoint the spot where the air's coming out. Yeah, so it's really channeling that movement. Now, we can use this fast moving air for a pretty cool science trick. And all we need is a light ball. So your little bags have light little foam balls inside, so little polystyrene balls like these ones here. If you don't have one of those, you could use something like a table tennis ball or Our favourite even... kind of science. You can use Maltesers, boys and girls, and then you can eat experiment afterwards. Because they are the lighter way to enjoy chocolate. Ah, uh, indeed. And you can take a little Malteser and you can hover it. So I'll, I'll, I'll give the Malteser a go, you okay. can give the I'll light give ball. ball a go. And we're going to need to breathe through the straw, pushing the air out, holding the ball over the top, but we've got to start blowing to create that stream of air before we let go of the ball. Are we ready? Ready. Three, two, one. Oh, I dropped my Malteser. I won't be eating that one. We'll try another one. Oh yes, it's definitely a little bit heavier that one. Needs a bit more work. I'll try table tennis ball. Woo. Definitely a little bit heavier. Yeah. So the heavier the ball is, the more force we have to put in. So these lightweight polystyrene balls are really good for exploring. And if you were to do the opposite, the opposite effect would happen. So if you could breathe in, you can create a vacuum. Ah, you can make them stick. So we can create low air pressure by making it move and hover. And we can also create a vacuum to make it stick and hold a breath in the other way. So that's pretty cool. It's very cool. So different balls that will require a different amount of force. So we've said about polystyrene balls, ping pong balls, even more teasers. Mm -hmm. What happens when we go bigger? Well, like this big. Like that big. Like this big. That's a lot bigger. Mm, a beach ball. What do you reckon, boys and girls? Do you reckon we can get the beach ball? It's quite light. It's pretty light. It's already filled with air. Oh, yes. There's lots of air inside, so yeah. that's going to be light. I can we give it a go. Give it a go. So like, scientists like to try out new things and they're really resist resilient, so they keep trying and they never give up. So we're going to have a go and see if we can get it to hover. Are we ready? Three, two, one. <laughs> oh. No. Okay. It didn't no, work. Definitely not enough puff. Not enough puff. So we didn't have enough air moving fast enough through our straws to hover the ball. And then the other force, gravity, took over. It definitely won that time. Mm. So gravity is a force that's pulling us down, keeping us here on Earth. And it's pulling this ball down. Now we're going to need an incredible amount of force to overcome gravity. Hair dryer? Hair dryer. Did you bring a hair dryer? No, I didn't. Oh, I left it at home today. Leaf blower. What about leaf blower? We've, we've been doing some gardening. We've, we've done got the gardening. Oh, oh. Ah, yes, there's a leaf blower. Now, my leaf blower is called Larry. You can say hello if you like. Hi, Larry. Hello, Larry. So, Larry the leaf blower normally lays lots of leaves around, but it's spring time, summer time at the moment. We've, we're not in autumn, and the trees still have their leaves, and they're not on the floor. So, he's quite restful at the moment. We're going to need to wake him up. So on the count of three, you can join in at home as well. We're going to shout out, wake up Larry. And we're going to see if he's got enough force to stream the air in the same way we did with the straw and cradle the beach ball. Do you think he can do it? Well, it's worth a try. 
try. I mean, again, we are scientists, we'll give it a go. Got to give it a try. Are we ready then? Count to three. Wake up, Larry. One, One two, two, three. Wake up, Larry! <laughs> but it wasn't meant to be blowing me away, was he? No, we kind of forgot the beach ball. The beach ball. We need to hold the beach ball out. So we better wake him up again. Let's have another go. Are you ready? Wake up, Larry. Three, two, one. Wake, wake up, Larry! <laughs> side to side it was still stuck inside even even if you move exactly yeah and the air on the outside in the rest of the room is actually trying really hard to join that fast moving air because it doesn't like, like to be different, different. it likes to be the same so it was actually pushing downward and stopping the ball from flying away or hitting the ceiling pretty cool stuff very right, cool so that's interesting to be able to move air and air is everywhere so larry was yeah. going to use all the air in the room but um, what if we blow air into something else, into other areas? Well, what about this cup? Okay, so if we blow air into the cup, will it stretch like a balloon? No. No. No, no it's not made of stretching material, is it? It's, uh, it's paper. It's paper. It's, it's not paper. Paper. It's not paper. It's not going to stretch it. Okay. Um, well, it's, but it's already full of air. It's, it's full? It's full. You really can't see it, but it is full. Air I, is everywhere. I would have said that was an empty cup. It's nice to know your cup can never be empty. Oh, my cup's never empty. It's full of air. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. So what if I try adding more air? Okay. Have a go. <sighs> okay. So can you feel something? I can see your fridge moving. Yeah. It, it's kind of it feel like a lot of blowing in. It's coming back out. Oh. Well, hang on a minute. What if I put a ball inside? Oh, it leaped. Interesting. There's a really visual way in which we can see what's happening to the air. So if we take our ball and pop it into the cup and we try and force more air inside, now bear in mind the cup's already full of air, then there's only one place for it to go. Back out again. So when it comes out, as the air is being forced out, oh, nearly, the ball is forced out too. Yay! Leaping balls. I like that. We always think of things as being empty when we can't see what's inside. And you'd normally think that a cup would be filled with water. But I suppose it's the same principle. If you fill a cup up with water and then keep adding more water, it's going to overflow. overflow. Yeah. Well, there's other things that are full of air. I mean, we did the cup, but what about my comb? Oh, that's a strange looking contraption. What have you well, made there? It's got a hole in one end. Okay. And the other side has been covered. Oh. So it's full of air. Oh, I've got one too. Yeah. So combs that are filled with air. Yeah. But they've got or a hole in. We could use my cup. Oh, so if you haven't got one of these, we can make your own out of a polystyrene cup or a plastic cup. Or a paper cup. Popping a hole in and using a little bit of balloon to stretch over the back. Okay. So what are the purpose of these? So the idea is it can force the air that's already inside. Already inside. Out. Oh. In the same way that we blow into it. So do we blow? No, no. This no. time we're going to use the elastic to give it some force. Remembering ah. equal and opposite reactions. If you okay. add a force energy this side, something's going to have to happen in the opposite way. Okay. So air's inside taking up space. And if we maybe push it out. Yeah. It's going to be Oh, yeah. Moving. I can feel, feel it. it. Oh, yeah. Again, little, little puffs of air. And I can spring it as well. Yeah. Oh, that's cool, but I can't. I can't really see that effect, can I? No. It, what hmm. about if we went a little bit bigger? Do you think we'd be able to see what happened there? Yeah, let's go bigger. I mean, I've got, I've got this one. I mean, it's quite a lot bigger. Oh, that's 
a big it's um, got a puffer thingy. Pole. What do you call these things? A z air zooka. They're an air zooka. Oh, I like it. So this one I would call an air cannon, a small homemade air cannon. Ah, an air cannon. So it's not shooting cannonballs, it's shooting air. Air cannon. Nice. This one has the same effect. It's got a open space. It's got an air filled cavity in the side. Okay. Back. And it's got elastic. Nice. I bet that's gonna I mean, work pretty well. Even just Oh yeah, look, you can yeah. see it moving. Yeah. But if you Oh let go, you can really see the effect moving like through Jen's hair. Like it really works. That's quite I feel work, definitely feel that's quite refreshing. It might be nice for like the summer. Oh, yeah. On a summer oh. day. Oh, okay. No? Maybe. 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 Oh, it's a lot of air in there. We, we can see the effect, but we couldn't see the air itself. No, but I reckon we could go even bigger! <laughs> that is definitely bigger. I've got a giant air cannon. So it's my turn! Okay. So air's inside taking out space in exactly the same way. No. And oh. I can puff. Yeah. Oh. Straight at you. Ha ha! No. I could definitely feel it. Uh-huh. Still couldn't see it. So you're like my target, and if I shoot the air at you, we can yeah. see the effect on the target. Like we know it's moving from here to here. Okay. I can feel it go past. So we can me. see the starting point and the end point, but we can't really see it travelling. No. Mm. So uh, if there was a way that we could see the air, I wonder what we'd see. Is there a way that we could see the air? Well, we sometimes see the air on a cold day. A cold day, yeah. That's oh, right, boys and girls. When the kettle boils. So in, on a cold day, boys and girls, when we're outside and maybe walking to school, our breath is nice and warm and the environment around us is really cold. Yeah. So we get to see a nice misty effect. And you see that coming out of the kettle too, don't you? Yeah, yeah. the opposite. The, the air steam, outside but is it's cooler really than the air inside. Yeah. So we're seeing water in its gas form. Yeah. Water vapour. So we need some water vapour. Well, do you know what? I happen to have the right thing. That's handy. I have a fog machine. Excellent. So here is my fog machine and we're going to fill the air cannon. There and you goes. see what's going this? It's coming out. You'll see it start to drift around, oozing out of any spaces, because obviously it's displacing the air that's already inside. We're going to move that air out, replace it with our fog. Uh-huh. Now. So. Now we, we have this way. an air cannon filled with some fog. Fantastic. Fantastic. What it will look like? Let's see how it goes. Oh, wow. Whoa, I wasn't expecting that. That doesn't look anything like I thought it would. So it's not an, a cannonball, like an air ball. In no. Fact, it's a ring shape, isn't it? Yeah, it's more of a donut or a hoop. Do you know the science word for that? No. A vortex. That's called a vortex. A vortex is when the air it's being pushed out of a small space nice. at speed. The air in the center is moving very fast. It's got a clear escape, but the air on the outside is getting caught up on the edges of that like cannon and it's being slowed down. You can see it as the hoop is going, it's kind of curling the air in. So it means it gets stuck and we can see it. Whoa, we can really see that. We hope you can at home too. So these amazing rolling ring circles that we can see are being created because of the way the air is coming out and being forced at different speeds in different places from the air cannon. Now you can see also that as they, cool. as they move, they slow down. They get oh, bigger, yeah. more dispersed. Yeah, so because kind of, the whole room's kind of going foggy, isn't it? They're not staying as they were shape. in their ring shape, are they? No. Ooh, well, it's because they don't like to be different. Ah, because air doesn't like to be different, it likes, likes to be the same. same. So it means it's going to eventually just join in with the rest of the air in the room. As we can see, even the foggy air is dispersing. It is, it's it is. It's moving and joining in with the other air, and it's getting clearer and clearer in here again. So if we can't see the air coming from our mini air cannons then, maybe we need a target so that we can see it yeah. instead. So you're seeing, like, with the effect on our hair, the effect that that can have. Ah, oh, right. So some of us might have one of these targets, but they're really easy to make. We're going to make a little triangular target like this one here. So it's just a strip of paper. I'm going to oh, fold it into three and then we're going to tape it together at the top with a little bit of sticky tape there. Just to hold it in, in place. So that makes a nice little triangular shape and we've got a target on the front there. So we can balance it on a cup like this one here oh, and then we can see if we can blast it off. Oh, come on. Oh, I can feel it. Oh, oh, it turned upside down! Yay! 
we got it off. So there was enough air inside of the air cannon to push it off and we can see that effect. That's very cool. It is. But I like that. And there's only a few ways. I mean, it's fun playing with air. It's mm. fun playing with the air cannons. Mm -hmm. It's fun playing with the straws and balls and eating the Maltesers. I mean, playing with the Maltesers. Uh, yeah. um, but how do scientists really use this? Oh, We've done all these experiments and they're really fun, but mm. scientists don't just sit and do fun things all day. So they need to use them. We made the balls hover. Yeah. We filled balloons and tubes and yeah. moved it and it takes up space everywhere. It's everywhere and it we got flight. our wings to fly yes. through the fly. Ah flight. Flight. Things that fly need birds. air. Birds, birds need air. What do they do? Flap. They push the air down so they can travel up using mm -hmm. opposite forces. Fantastic. Okay. Mm. But um, what about a plane then? It doesn't flap. A plane doesn't flap. What about a helicopter? Well, it spins. Ah, oh, it spins. So spinning blades might help. Well, should we have a look at spinning blades first? Well, yeah, because we see it in nature. We see sycamore seeds fall from the tree. Very similar reaction. Oh, they yeah. spin. Yeah, what have you seen those seeds falling from the tree? Let's have a go at making our own version. So a sycamore tree seed has the seeds stuck in the middle, so they're nice and heavy, and then some blades that come out at the side, and it means it's got this helicopter spinning rotation so that the wind can make it travel really far, and that's an advantage so that the seed can send its tree out long distances so they don't grow in the same area. Now, we've made one of these paper copters, and you can have a go too, so you might have templates in your little goodie bag, or there is a downloadable printable so you can print it off and make your own one. Very cool. So these are based on that design of the seed. We've got two blades at the top and then a heavier piece at the bottom. So let's have a look how we make them. Okay, so we have a template like this. Now these are going to be downloadable so when you're seeing this video you'll be able to find a link for the template. The template has some dotted lines and some solid lines. The dotted lines are for cutting. There's one long one here and it stops there and you've got two short ones at the side. So I'm going to just cut those So we're going to first. need a pair of scissors to make those snips. Okay. So cutting the two blades out at the top. Now nothing ever gets cut off, so don't cut anything off. And if you do happen to make a mistake, not a problem, you can stick it back together. That's it. So we're stopping on the solid lines. So you and can see mine is mostly this T shape, so that's the bit we want to hold. So then we're going to... There's a line there, but then we're going to yeah. stop because it's not dotted in the yeah, middle. Yeah, yeah. And then snip the other side. Excellent. So we've got our blades at the top, so we can bend them in either direction. So you just want one going forwards and one going backwards, like this Excellent. one here. Doesn't matter which way you go. No. So we're going to bend one one way and one the other on that solid line. Okay, and then you've got your sides as well. So you see these solid lines here, you're going to fold in one side behind. You can fold the other side in as well. Ah, so then we get this nice thick bit here. Like a trunk. Yeah, like a trunk, yeah. yeah. And there's also one more line. There's one more thing to follow. It's this bit at the bottom. It's going to add the weight. So you're going to fold that up. Okay. In place, you can see. And you're going to clip it in place with a paper clip. That's it. So you're just going to need a paper clip just to slide and it. Again, in there. added weight. It means that gravity is going to be really pulling this down. So let's okay. test them out. Yeah. If you've had a go at making yours, you want to hold them up nice and high and then let go. Woo! Ooh, mine spins really well. Yeah, right? Very good. Oh, you threw yours. Ah, yeah. I thought I'd see what happens. So if we throw I mean, them, it doesn't they matter still which way go, it go the right way up. That paper clip and that added weight, added weight is one that's going to bring it down. Ah, yeah. So the weight's at this end, so it flips it this way around and starts spinning. Yeah. Cool. Now, if you were to swap over which way your blades were, so mine's forward this way and back that way. If I swap them over, that way around. Oh yeah, mine's the same. So mine was spinning in this way around. So that's kind of if I look from the top that's going anti-clockwise. So if I go the other way, do you think it will go the other direction? Yeah. Let's give it a go, shall we? Exactly. Oh yes, clockwise now. So Brilliant. Really easy and really simple way of seeing how air can move and work. So that works really well to explain sycamore seeds and how it travels, but not so much helicopter blades. No. Helicopters have engines and they have a motor. Mm -hmm. So instead of relying on the air to push the motor around, 
the motor pushes the air around. Okay, so these blades get spun around using the motor and, and because they've got a slight angle, angle to them, it pushes creates, air down, creates lift. Creates lift so it goes Equal up. Equal and opposite. Equal and opposite reaction. That's really interesting. But I, I want to make these fly. Well, then we'd need more air. More Things air. Things like the, uh, the balls and the straws. Oh, okay, so I could use my straw. Probably, I mean, or a really big straw? A really big straw is probably going to be best. Okay, so we're going to try and make big. this one fly. So yeah. you're going to hold it over the top. And I'm going to need to power my big straw. Oh, yes, that's it. That's it. We'll put it inside. We'll power my big straw with the leaf blower. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right, we'll give it a go. So we're going to need to wake up Larry again then, boys and girls. Are you ready? Can you remember what to say? Three, two, two one. one. Wake, wake up, up Larry! Try moving those blades different directions. Mm, that was really fun. So helicopters have got blades that spin around, but an aeroplane has static wings. It doesn't flap like a bird. No, they stay still. But they are also they do have angles involved. They do have direction. They are mm. shaped, and they have an engine. Ah, oh, so an airplane does have an engine and it has special shaped wings and we call that an aerodynamic shape. And aerodynamic means that it allows the air to travel over it in a particular way. And actually they're called air foils. And the wing is such shape that as it travels through the air, the air actually travels at different speed over the top, faster, and the air underneath is going slower. And hang on a minute, that means there's a difference. Therefore there's going to be a lift because it doesn't like being different. No, air doesn't like to be different. It, it likes, likes to, to be, be the, the same. same. So the air underneath is going to join that fast moving air. So it creates this motion where it's trying to join in and goes over the top and that gives the plane the lift it needs to fly. Is there any way we could see it? I mean, we can't fit an aeroplane in our studio. No, there's definitely no way we could get an aeroplane in here. Um, and we can't make it go fast enough through the air to give it lift. I mean, but do you know what we can use? Oh, something really sciencey here, boys and girls. We're going to use some toilet roll. Toilet roll. Yeah, toilet roll. Honestly, toilet roll. Yeah, toilet roll. Trust me. Oh, you're supposed to be a scientist, Nitro. Oh, I know. I know. Bear with me. Okay. It might not seem scientific, but toilet roll can help explain how aeroplanes fly. Imagine this is the edge of the wing, and it's travelling through the sky. And as it travels through, the air is travelling quicker over the top which means there's lift underneath and it starts to bring the aeroplane's wing up. So we could try the same science here, we could make fast moving air travel over the top and we should be able to get lift underneath, right? Yeah. Should we give it a go? Let's give it a go. Okay. 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 I'll give you a countdown, ready? Okay. Three, two, one. <gasps> well, yeah. Okay, okay. No, I, 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 I tried this earlier, it definitely worked. Three, two, one. <sighs> oh, it kind of did a Mm, that wasn't very dramatic, was it? No. Mm. Um, oh, hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Oh, oh. we're going to have to bring Larry back out because clearly I've only got so much air and Larry can use all the air in the room. Now, if he can make it fly, I wonder how far it will go. Well, I mean, he's got a lot more air than you. Okay, shall we give it a go, boys and girls? I want to see this. Are we ready? Three, two, one. Wake up, Larry! <laughs> Right now, I'm going to leave you to tidy that. Oh, okay. thank you. That's what a lab assistant's for. <laughs> so, hopefully, that's demonstrated to all you boys and girls how amazing air is, or even air amazing. amazing. Oh, gosh. Now, we did include a little extra. So, if you've got one of these bags, you do get a finger flying rocket, and that uses elastic band energy to be able to get a rocket to be streamlined and fly through the air. So, you can challenge yourself to see how far these can go. So, we just have to stretch it out and let it go. Woo! Woo! Straight at you. If you haven't made one of those, then you can have a go at making your own rocket. And there's lots of other science videos that you can check out on my YouTube channel called Nitrogen and the 
Technicolor lab coat. Oh yeah, I, I had to plug. Like I had to plug. I like it. Right. So well, boys and girls, we're done for today. We hope you enjoyed it and we hope that you get to use all of these amazing science equipment for Locked to Bubble experiments too. Enjoy experimenting. Have a great rest of the summer. See you guys soon. Bye for now. Bye. Bye.